Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. Story number one. They built, written by Guncaster. They were weak. The natural rulers of their home preyed upon them in all quarters. They had no great claws, no mighty fangs, no armored scales, and so they built. They built themselves claws and fangs of wood, stone, and bone. With them, they defied the natural order, as those who came before them did. They were weak. The elements of their home preyed upon them in all quarters. Their bodies were weak, their skin thin and furless, and so they built. They built themselves dens from the discredited bodies of those who once preyed upon them. They built homes from mud and straw, clay and wood. They were weak. Even within their own genus, they were not the strongest, not the most cunning. So they built. They built themselves words to convey their thoughts, and with them built myths. Myths like morality, law, order, money... With these myths, they built societies and drove their siblings into extinction. In these primitive societies, the strong and cunning would still rise to the top, like an alpha wolves in a pack. They were weak, and they could now realize this. So they built themselves sharper claws of metal alloy, of copper, bronze, and iron. They built themselves thicker hides from the skins of beasts greater than themselves, Shod with the gleaming scales forged in fire, held together with straps and fiber rather than tissue and tendon. They were weak and wished for strength, so they built their societies into empires, great superorganisms with fangs and scales in the form of innumerable individuals. In the form of these world spanning leviathans, they waged wars of conquest on themselves in an attempt to garner power in all forms. Numbers, resources, territory. They were weak, their lives short and filled with strife. So they built, and contrary to their still primitive nature, they learned in ways that went against their primal understanding of existence. They were weak and fleeting, and they could see that. So they built. They built a world of stone and metal, took that which was given by nature, and exploited it, twisted it, depleted it then waged more war upon their own kin to gain access to that which had not yet been depleted. They were wise enough to know, but foolish enough to ignore knowledge they disliked. They could see the truth of the universe, yet were blind enough to choose to ignore it. They were not the first of their kind in their universe, their galaxy, or even their solar system, but they were the first in one aspect. They could know without understanding. They could acknowledge the absolute despair that means existing in a fleeting form such as theirs, and choose to struggle on to make a mark of existence in spite of their impermanence. They were weak, but they created that could erase the weakness. They created a network which allowed them to surpass the oppressions forced on them in the physical world, to suppress the limits of physical capability. For the children of the web, it was a breaking of a new millennium that signaled the impending death of the old world, which their ancestors had built. They were weak, and they knew it. But a few rose above, and we saw the pattern breaking. A few shouldered the risk of being made into villains and pariahs, and destroyed the old world that the kind had come to know and hold on to. A few ushered in true change. When the last generations born of the old world were last dying out, they burned those that were clinging onto its carcass with a nuclear hellfire. We rightfully expected them to follow the path that had been laid out for them, to inevitably destroy themselves by the power of nuclear fission. But they did not, as they were given a common enemy, one who threatened to destroy the new world and usher in another thousand years of feudalism and theocracy. United, we thought these insects could become more than a grain of sand at times, Perhaps a faint gust of wind, or even a tiny crease in the dunes of eternity. That could not be allowed to happen. They were weak, 
and the natural order of things dictated that they had to be shown their place in the universe. Where we grew individually over millions of years, they built. That much is true where we were the chosen few. Born of the infancy of the omniverse, they were walking, talking, thinking, meat. Individually even weaker than their primal ancestors. Softened by a comfortable lifestyle. United perhaps enough to entertain one of us for a split seconds. However, they built. And when we descended upon them, they feared as they rightfully should. But within that fear, they found the courage of the corded animals as a few did before them. But unlike those that came before them, they built in ignorance of the natural law. Indeed, they were weak, and so they built. Had we watched closer, we would have seen that not only had they built for themselves, they built upon themselves. Their bodies were weak, and when we descended upon them, they built themselves greater bodies of metal and polymer. They knew these bodies were weak still, and sought power beyond their material realm. Through their despair and willful ignorance, they learned the secrets of the universe, yet refused to comprehend them. They knew, but they could not be driven mad by the revelations that that knowledge bestowed. They could see the light of infinity, but could not be blinded by it. Within what was but an instant in time in our perception, they learned how to call out into the ocean of infinity and bend it to their will. Within an instant, a race of blind, idiot monkeys grasped knowledge beyond thought and light beyond vision and became imbued with them in ways that our kind never could. What cruel irony it is that their primitive nature would give them dominion over the forces that drove even my brethren to madness. What cruel irony that a race of glorified monkeys would come to see primordial entities who transcend space and time as little more than glorified batteries for their worship. End of story. Story number two. Brain Chemicals, written by Clonk 3D. Whenever you negotiate with a new species, there is some unique fact about them that causes every plan regarding them to be revised. Regardless of how much information you gather about a species, there is always something you miss. The fact is usually unearthed by an innocuous question during integration negotiations. The screwing that question was, so what do you guys want for lunch? For the Gru, it was, how old are you guys anyway? For the humans, what is juvenile? Frankly, for a while, nobody knew what to do with the humans. Heck, even the humans themselves didn't know what to do. See, there are two drugs that produce nearly universal effects across species, and such are universally banned. The first one is the most addictive substance known. 10 picograms is all it takes to develop a nearly unbreakable lifelong habit with its users willing to wage wars for a few drops of the stuff. The other is a drug that sends its users into a zombie-like rage state with doses as small as 5 nanograms. These horror show drugs are of course esterone, commonly called estrogen, and testosterone. Humans produce both of these drugs naturally in mind-boggling quantities. Humans show an incredible high immunity to traditional effects, and even require these drugs to develop a sexual maturity. A few milliliters of adult human blood will send the average sentient into a state of extreme rage and dependence, giving the person that tasted human blood access to higher than normal strength and an absolute need to consume human blood. Humans even have a cultural term for this phenomenon, vampire. Another big danger is that some species are sensitive enough that they can get contact high just from being in close proximity to exercising humans. Eventually, it was determined that for the safety of the general public, humans could not be integrated into the galactic society and must remain a secret. That was 66 years ago. Earlier this week, the humans contacted us once again. Their drive to join us was strong enough that they sunk trillions worth of galactic credits and decades of medical research into finding the holy grail of anti-drug technology. They created a solution that can nearly instantly neutralize both drugs without interacting with anything else. If every human carries said solution, they can effectively negate the unfortunate condition they are cursed with in others. 
While this Jovenex does not treat the dependency caused by coming into contact with Esterone, it does offer a level of safety due to the post-testosterone crash caused by the sudden destruction of testosterone in the recipient's body. This allows the area to be evacuated that the bleeding human can be treated and contained. With Esterone addiction management patches available, we believe the talks on integrating the humans may resume. So where were we? Ah yes. Next item on the docket here is uh, what you term the fight or flight response. Osteocalcin, you say? Causes you to enter a mode of increased perception, heart rate reaction and aggressiveness. Well, in that case, perhaps you shouldn't lick the paint. And uh, adrenaline causes osteocalcin production. Are you sure? Well, there's an awful lot of sentience that make that, you know. Perhaps you should make a list. Yeah. Note number one. Initially, there were concerns that this was a fabrication to cover up the truth, with leading evidence being the creation of an intoxicating drink called the Bloody Mary. Note number two. Vampires predate first contact by over a thousand years, needing more evidence to the theory that humans were aware of the effects that their body had on others. Note number three. They tend to leak. A lot. It's a great cooling method if you aren't smearing murder drugs on everything. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.